Hello, 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 community! So great to be back! Today we will go beyond Mamba S6. So, I will show that we can view Transformer as a flow map in a space of probability measures. And we will dive in in a second. Just give me one minute to do a recap. I did a video on Mamba S6 and I asked, hey, is this an architecture that is better than the self attention we have in our transformer networks that empower JetGPT or Google's art? And I was asked for some additional literature. I like this one and I like those two YouTube videos by Albert Gu. And if you have to choose, I would say go with the medical AI group presentation. Beautiful. There's a beautiful remark from one of my viewers and he said, hey, you are all wrong. Your mathematics is wrong. The name state space model here is the same, but it is all different in computer science because we are talking here about time series. And in my textbook of computer science, there's nothing of anything of physics. And we have just here a definition of a p-dimensional vector autoregression as a state equation. Because in my video, I used here a non-conventional approach here to the member network. I presented this as a theoretical physics. And this is beautiful because this shows us exactly what's going on right now. So let's dive into this for a second. In this textbook, there is a definition that a state space model is characterized by two principles, a hidden latent process, and we have an observation, and those observations are independent of the state. That's it. So you see, this enables us to have a physical interpretation and an interpretation in computer science or time series analysis. And if you look in your textbook, you see that in the introduction, it says, hey, all this here, the state space model, was introduced in Kalman and uh, Busi, 1960-61, and the model arose in the space tracking setting where the state equation defines the motion equation for the position or the state of a spacecraft with a location x and some data y, reflecting information that can be observed from a tracking device such as velocity and azimuth. Now, if you would have gone into Google, yes, for my younger viewer, Google is where we had this before GPT, you would understand that the Kalman filter was developed in the 1960s for the context of the spacecraft tracking in aerospace, in particular for the Apollo project to go to the moon. So this Kalman filter, this state space model, was an application crucial of the trajectories of manned spacecraft traveling to the moon and back to Earth. And we have this complicated intertwined force field of the gravitational force field of Earth and the Moon. So you see, because we do not have the possibility to solve the analytical equation in the 1960s, this state space model was invented to be able to calculate here the trajectory of the Apollo spacecraft. So you see, there is a physical reference. So when you say, hey, this is just computer science and has nothing to do with physics. Well, you know, there are some beautiful correlations here. Great. So now, update. We go beyond Mamba. Please fasten your seat belts because here we go. You know, mathematics, physics, a dynamical system is a system that evolves over time according to a very free set of rules. And this is a concept used in well, anything that changes over time the motion of our celestial bodies from the Apollo spacecraft to the growth of population. And it's beautiful. Now, traditional deep neural networks and the older will remember ResNets are discrete in nature. The data move to the layers in a stepwise fashion. However, our neural ordinary differential equations propose viewing this process as a continuous process. So now imagine the data smoothly flowing through the layers of a network rather than stepping through each single layer step by step. So these neural ordinary differential equations are the grandfather of AI. And ResNet here, if you want, is the grandmother of AI. And they offered in the old times here a powerful framework for understanding 
and designing deep learning models. So you see, this happened a long time ago. Now, Ben, for you, simple neural ordinary differential equation example. Hey, you notice we can do this, of course, in a more complex way with a free function. In the simple example here, this resembles a single layer neural, net, neural network where the input evolves smoothly over time. And of course, in a more complex case, allows for a sophisticated evolution of a multi-layered network. And we can model here the complex pattern and dependencies in the data. So this is where we had our grandfather, the neural ordinary differential equation. Beautiful. Now, the concept of time in this neural ordinary differential equation is interesting. So we treat now the depth of the network, so the number of the layers of our network, as a time-like variable. So instead of processing the data through discrete layers, n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus whatever, we define now a continuous trajectory that the data points follow. So imagine, we have now somewhere a source, we have a neural network, and then we have a flow of data, a flow of information through the neural network. Beautiful. This brings us to continuous time dynamical system. So, in the classical system, idea and model the transformations where a network as a continuous time dynamical system. This is done by defining a time dependent function. I just showed you in the complex case where we have a state, we have, for example, a time, and we have a theta parameter. And this describes the range of change of the network states at any time t, and the function f is parameterized by theta. And this is, and you're not going to believe this, analogous to the weight in our neural network that we know and we love. Beautiful. However, now this approach opens up a new perspective. So with now a continuous model, hey, we know the equation of motion now for the Apollo spacecraft orbiting Earth and going to Moon. We have the theory now. We do not need an approximation but a state space model. Now we apply the real theoretical physics theories from dynamical system to understand and improve the neural network architecture. This is the main step we're gonna take. So we break here whatever was the state space model and we try to insert the real analytical mathematical solution of the equation of motion, for example, or here fluid dynamics. And you might say, what corner of science are we working? Yes, and we are working in theoretical physics. And finally, finally, we can talk about flow maps. And we have now something where there's a little bit more physical context behind all of our calculations. Now, you know that in Floyd Dynamics, this flow state equation, our set of mathematical equations, and I'll show you in a second, used to describe the motion of Floyd substances, such as liquids and gases. These equations are fundamental in the field of <coughs> theoretical physics and engineering, particularly in branches like aerodynamics, hydrodynamics, metrology, and whatever. And the core concept behind all of these equations is to model how the fluid properties, such as the velocity, the pressure, the density, the temperature, change in space and time in all our four-dimensional systems under various conditions. Isn't that beautiful? And we're going to use this insight now and we have a much better, much deeper understanding of what's going on. Now, you know from mathematics and theoretical physics that we have, whenever we have in a system a symmetry or a conservation of a particular parameter, this gives rise to law of nature. We discover something beautiful in this system. The same happens here. The foundation of the flow state equation is based on the principle here, conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. So, step by step, the conservation of mass in our system. Mass is not generated or deleted. It is conserved in this system with our system boundaries. So This is what we call here in physics a continuity equation. And it's stated the mass of a fluid remains constant as it flows through a given volume in a particular defined period of time. The conservation of the momentum. You know this. This is our beautiful and world famous Navier Stokes equation of fluid dynamics. They describe how the momentum of a fluid parcel changes due to the forces like pressure gradients, external forces, and viscous forces. 
And you know this. You say, hey, gradient, uh, gradient descent. Hey, this sounds interesting. And yes, you are on the right track. You are there. <laughs> and then conservation of energy, how the energy is transferred. And we're going to calculate all of these. Beautiful. Yeah, maybe it's Stokes. You know this. We have boundary conditions. We have initial conditions. We have to do all of this for the mathematics. But I just want to give you an idea. I want to give you a feeling of what is happening here. Yeah. And this is what we calculate. If you go supersonic, the supersonic boom of a fighter jet, this is what we can calculate with this equation. So we do not need now here a state space model that says here the airplane was here this time and now one time step later the airplane is here and suddenly a discontinuity happened when we describe the system. No, we have now the theoretical physical formula to describing here the system, the system parameters, the complete system to show why a supersonic boom happens. And we can calculate this. And this is now where we go beyond. And for you, you have to know Bernoulli's equation, you have to know Euler's equation, and of course, you know Navier-Stokes equation. Beautiful. So, flow maps is a very simple concept. And you will see, now I'll give you the definition. In dynamical system theory, a flow map is a fundamental concept used to describe how a state of a system evolves over time. And you say, hey, this is exactly like the state space model. Huh? We have the state of, uh, I don't know, Apollo, and then we look how it evolves over time. Yes, you're right. And we have here an ordinary differential equation. Yes, you're right. Where we say, hey, we look at the state, for example, at the position of the Apollo spaceship, of a system and f is then a function dictating the system's dynamics exactly like they did in the Apollo program. And the flow map phi is now defined as a function that maps the state of a system from one time to another. This is it. This is the flow map idea. And you will say, hey, this is so familiar. Isn't this the state space idea? No, because, and this is now the beauty. You remember that I told you, with the state space model, it seems that there is, n because there's no self-attention mechanism, I could not make in-context learning work. So whenever you try those state space models yourself, with your data, you will notice there is no few short learning examples that the system exacts. And the performance of in-context learning and all the examples you give in the prompt are not as performant, to put it mildly, as in our self-attention transformer network. Therefore, now we say, and I personally, I need in-context learning for my information I provide in the prompt to GPT-4. So now we look at this and say, hey, we integrate self-attention. So we break here with the state spade model. And we say, no, if they are not able to handle in-context learning, no prompt added information is accepted by the system, or in a later evolution, it will be accepted because the open source community is genius. But for the moment, I need self-attention. I need in-context learning in my transformer alternatives. So I now say, hey, I want to have self-attention, and I apply now the flow map to the self-attention. So we have now a dynamical system on our transformer network with self-attention. So we do not go from S6 to S7. No, we break here completely, and we go the next evolutionary step. We have now self-attention in the system. But we treat it differently. Since we have the equation of fluid, we can use those equations now to calculate self-attention in a much more detailed and better way. Okay. This viewpoint allows us to conceptualize the operation of transformer as continuous transformation of data states rather than a series of discrete steps where we have the data propagating to the first layer to the second layer and so on. You know this? Beautiful. So you might say here in my Mamba video, I showed you here, that we had a discrete time state space model here, the recurrent representation, and for being able to have a parallel computation on our GPU and whatsoever clusters, we need here for the training here, a convolutional representation. And you might say, hey, 
Is this not somehow the inverse? Not really. Let me give you a little bit more details about this. So, make it very easy. This is for our people who do not have a PhD in theoretical physics. Self-attention is now a state transformation. And you know, we have an input state, we have an output state, and in between something happens. But this now is, per definition of our system, a self-attention mechanism because I need in-context learning in my transform. So, update each token state based on its interaction with all other tokens. Beautiful. And for this, we will use some fluid equation that we know. So we'll finally bring physics into this, right? Oh yeah, mathematics too. So we have an initial state. This is, of course, a tensor or uh, input matrix here. This is an input sequence in vector form. You know this. And then we have here self-attention, multi-head. You know this uh, query, key and values uh, structures. Multi-head updates the state x to a state x dash. This is a kind of flow map acting on the state of a system, transforming it based, and this is now important, we have now an interaction dynamics defined now by the real self-attention mechanism. But now we define the self-attention mechanism differently. And I will show you in a second how. And the whole thing is now a flow map interpretation. So we think now of the self-attention as a discrete step in a continuous flow map. And you're going to say, what a brilliant idea. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, we go now. I need just to go one step further with you and then it's done. That Then you understand everything. So we have now a detailed mathematical model of transformers. I will show you this in a second. So we're treating the transformer now as a flow map, but not in a, any particular space, but in a space of probability measures. And we have to construct this and I will show you this, how we do this. So transformers as flow maps in the space of probability measures. And we have to have the interaction, because if this token has here a fluid flow through the network, it has to have some interaction, because we have self-attention. So we have to kind of calculate here the attention score between each and every token in a sentence, for example. So what we do now, we have an interacting particle system. And this particle system brings us now here the mathematical describable interaction. And it's a mean field to make it a little bit simpler for us. Beautiful. This is the main idea of the new approach that goes beyond Mamba. So maybe you have to understand a little tiny bit of physics, but I make it so simple, you're going to laugh at the end of this video. So, complete description. If you want to have it here on one glance, transformer flow maps, transformer flow map is used to describe how an input data evolves as it passes through the layers of a network with self-attention. You have an input representation. You have the evolution through the layers. You have the self-attention mechanism, but now described as a dynamical system where each token state, so careful how you define a token and what becomes a token in your natural language, for example, is updated based on a function of the states of all the other tokens. We know this from the calculation here, from the classical calculation of self-attention. And this resembles the continuous evolution described by the flow maps in a mathematical way. Then we go, of course, for discrete layers to a continuous flow where we can apply our flow state equations. As I told you, this is our grandfather, our neural ordinary differential equation, where this already happened hundreds of years ago in the Stone Age of AI. And then we implement it. Simple, a little bit of mathematics. And of course, remember, and I will show you this, we have to go with the probabilistic interpretation because, you know, we have our transform in a classical self-attention way is also an autoregressive system and we have their particular probability density. And we do more or less the same, just in a little bit of different framework. If this is a little tiny bit too much for you at the first run, here's a simpler form. Okay, imagine this. We have an interacting particle system. And this models here the flow state in a transformer. And we use this particle system in the context of the self-attention calculation. And we say, hey, we use simply the concept from statistical physics and dynamical systems in theoretical physics. Now, 
into classical Newtonian interacting particle system state, each particle or entity or token has its own state, which evolves not only based on its own properties, but also due to the interaction with other tokens or particles. Particle and token are the same in our view. Now, in a transform architecture, each token, it might be a word or a subword unit, a token, can be sort of a particle whose state, this is represented, of course, in a classical way by the embedding vector, is influenced by all the other tokens in the sequence. Of course, we have a semantic correlation when we talk, when we use words in sentences. Now, this is analogous to the self-attention mechanism where each token representation is updated based on a relationship with every other token, for example, in the sequence of a sentence. If you translate an English sentence to a French sentence, this is what's happening. So, we have to model now the complex dependencies and the interaction between all the different tokens and the tokens within its clusters, mirroring how each part of the input sequence in a transformer influences and is influenced by the other parts. Now you know that in addition, those interacting particle systems are inherently probabilistic, which aligns well with the nature of many tasks and machine learning, including those tackled by the transformer. So they provide here a natural framework. Such systems can easily scale with the number of tokens, making them suitable for modeling sequences of varying length and common scenario in NLP tasks. And we have self-attention because I need here in context learning, I need to provide here for RAC, for example, additional information in the cross. So I need this for my work. Yeah, so you have here an initial condition, input sequence here, a little bit more in the mathematical form here of a vector embedding. And then you have here the evolution to the former layer here, the self-attention mechanism here in a very simple or make it more simple, you just have to flow state interpretation. Beautiful. Now, I told you, you know quite some formulas and I want that we have a clear view what equations are we using. First, we started here with very normally ordinary differential equation. You know, the neural ODEs we use for ResNets. Then we defined what is a flow map. And for you, the exact definition. Then we said, hey, the self-attention mechanism is important for us. And you know how we calculate the self-attention in our transformer with our beautiful softbox. Beautiful. And we have here the, the query, the key, and the value. Uh, tensor structures, matrices, expect, yes, and a scaling factor, yes, of course. And then we switch to a continuous flow dynamical system transformation. Very easy, just a function of theta. That's it. Full stop. And we have, of course, the self attention and the feed forward network integrated. And then we understand this is, of course, a probabilistic flow map because we are not moving here in with Newtonian particles, but hey, we are a little bit advanced. We go with probabilistic density structure. This is all that you need to know. Five equations, simple as can be. Okay. I will show you that it, in reality, it's a little touch, a little, little bit more complex, but this is just to warm up. Okay, so now we start. Now, now here we go. You know, I was asked, hey, why do we calculate everything here on NVIDIA GPUs? We do not have little NVIDIA GPUs in our brain when we open the skull here, no? And I said, hey, what a beautiful image. So no, we have here our brain. This is quite fluid. If you have been studying medicine, anatomy, and you had your first courses, and you see this the first time, you'll say, e, e, git. So the brain is quite squibblery. It's quite, ooh, yeah, semi-fluid. So what a beautiful introduction here to fluid dynamics. Again, just to make this clear now from a different perspective, but you notice, I just repeat this to be absolutely clear. When we move now to fluid flows. Fluid equations simulate transformers flow state now in a nonlinear case. It's a tiny bit of theoretical concept. We notice it's not in your notebooks, neither in theoretical physics, nor in computer science, nor in time series evaluation. This is brand new, and I will show you the source in a minute. But it offers us some beautiful perspective for the understanding here that nonlinear dynamics, and this is what we are looking for. So, fluid dynamics, behavior of fluid, liquids, gas, described by equation, you know this, velocity, density, temperature, 
So the evolution of token and the token representation that we have chosen in our particular mathematical space now throughout the layers can be parallelized in our understanding to the flow of fluid particles. So we bring a little bit of real world physics into the self-attention of the transformers. And of course, we have to go nonlinear because, you know, self-attention is per definition inherently nonlinear. So the mapping of this nonlinearity to the fluid system is now what is so beautiful. And yes, you know, Navier-Stokes equation is known for the nonlinear nature. And what a coincidence that I already introduced you to them. Again, this is the same, just in a different perspective. So that you wrap your head around this and you say, hey, it is so easy. My goodness. So self-attention as a fluid flow, you know this? So we have now a complex nonlinear transformation that occurs within our self-attention mechanism that we said, hey, we want to have this in our advanced mod model or mathematical representation. So we're integrating now the flow map with a nonlinear fluid dynamics. So we have the token dynamics and we move over to a continuous transformation. You know this. Now, just to make it clear, the third time, my goodness, you might say, but yes. So the nonlinear model interaction in transformer, you know, each token interacts with every other token in a sentence. We had a self-attention, self-attention scores are calculated and you know this multi-head attention calculations, and we do now the same with fluid dynamics. When a fluid dynamics model, this is represented as the interaction forces between particles, capturing the complex nonlinear dynamics of the flow state. Gorgeous. So I put this in a LaTeX file and I asked ChatGPT4 here to give you a short representation. And here you have exact mathematical formulation. One, two, three, four. Five, probabilistic interpretation. You have seen this before. This is just with a little touch of mathematics to be a little bit more precise because some you will complain that I miss out on the mathematics. <laughs> yes, I know. Sorry, try to improve myself. Now, what we are going to need now, if we do the mathematics, we are now enter, short interrupt. Do you know what is the partition function? And you know why we have to normalize here in the fluid dynamic case also our attention weights. So let's let's have a look at this. You know the attention scores when we calculate this in a classical transform of the textures. These are the calculations. These are the scores. Now you know, or maybe you have seen just in the code that the partition function Z is used to normalize those scores. So for a given query, a tensor, matrix, whatever, you know, set is computed here in this classical transformer self-attention weight. So what we have, we have here a dot product between the query and the key token of yes, yes, yes. K is some specific dimension. And the partition function now sums the exponentiated scores of all the keys, serves as a denominator in the softmax function for normalizing this. Great. And here we have it. Here in our self mix function, we have Z, our normalized thing. And then we have here our beautiful attention tensor matrix A attention. This is what we calculate here with the softmax functionality. This is what you know from the classical case. And now we switch over. Yeah, okay, I repeat. <clears throat> So we have a partition function Z and the self-attention mechanism. So this is crucial for the model to appropriately weigh the significance of the different parts of the input signal. And then we have here the normalization of our attention weights, two different things. Shows that the model attention on different tokens is proportionally distributed based on the relevance of the current token being processed. So this, this mechanism is at the heart of the transformability to handle the sequences with a long range dependencies and to contextually understand each element in this long sequence. You know this. Now, if we now deep dive at the classical attention mechanism, this you know how to code this, but let's just make it clear what it means in the mathematical definition, because we have to translate this to the Floyd dynamics equation, and it's easy. Let me show you. So just Warm up self-attention mechanism. You know this here, the matrix A, where each element A, I, J 
represent the attention weight from the token i to the token j, and then we combine here all the possible combinations. And these weights determine how much each token in the sequence, input sequence, output sequence, contributes to the representation of another token. You know this, and now then we're going to use an interactive particle system exactly for this description. So this is the simple case. So the computation of the tension weight, you know this, we just have done this. Now I just write it a little bit different. So you see here, the numerator is exponentiated as scaled dot part of the query. Yes, you know, in some of the similar terms of old tokens acting here as the normalization factor. And you know the denominator is our partition function. Beautiful. But this is what we need. So the complete self-attention mechanisms across all tokens can be represented as a tensor A, where each row corresponds to the attended weights computed for a particular token in the sequence. This is the classical case. Now I need you to really understand, and I have written a Latte file on this, and I let ChatGPT explain this in simpler, more beautiful English words than I can do. And after I fed in my Latte file to GPT-4, I say, hey, explain why P denotes the projection after observation Y onto the tangent space in my Latte file. And here you have now a beautiful English formulated explanation. And GPT-4 comes back and says, hey, P denotes here the projection of a vector Y onto the tangent space T at a point X on a manifold S. Typically, it's a unit sphere in the context of the neural network of the transformer architecture. And this projection is essential because it ensures that operation respect the geometric constraints on our manifold. And I have, of course, chosen here the most simple manifold here, and this is the unit sphere. And you know in machine learning, particularly in neural network calculation, the data points or the feature representation can be constrained to lie on and only on such a manifold for a reason. And I will show you, we have to look here, especially at the normalization function. So we have a, we have a manifold, this is the unit sphere, and then we have to introduce here the concept of a tangent space, a mathematical tangent space. If you have a PhD in mathematics, you say, yeah, it's so easy, trivial. If not, I make it easy for you. A tangent space at a point X on a unit sphere, and a manifold is the space of all possible directional velocities, we are operating refractors, in which one can move from x while remaining on this particular manifold. So in simpler terms, it's a linear space that touches on the manifold at x and represents all possible direction of movement from x. So you might say, hey, this is easy to understand. Beautiful. So why is now the projection operator needed in this space? We have to project onto the tangent space. Projection mathematical operation that takes a vector y and maps it onto the tangent space t. This operation is essential when the computation, like the updates in a neural network, and you might say, hey, wait, has this something to do with the gradient descent? Wait, well, congratulations, yes. It may lead to a point moving off the manifold, but we want to have a perfect calculation, so we want it on the manifold. We want to have it simpler to calculate. So in the context of neural networks, particularly those where the feature vectors are constrained to lie on this manifold, and in the easiest case is the unit sphere in a high dimensional space, ensuring that the updates during the training do not move the vectors off this particular manifold. And this is crucial. So to have a simple operation, simple mathematical performance, those projection operations ensure that even after some updates, some runs, the vectors remain within the geometric constraint of this particular manifold. So, and now, why we do this? We do this for this formula, that you will recognize this formula when I show you this in a little tiny bit more complicated form. So, if y is a vector here, then the projection of y onto our vector space can be represented here as this projection equation. And you know here, yx denotes the dot product between y and x, and x is the point on our unit sphere S, where the tangent space is defined. And this is the projection that we are looking for. And this formula effectively removes the component of our vector y in a high dimensional space that is orthogonal to the tangent space. It is not on the tangent space, but we want that everything is in onto the tangent space. Therefore, we have to do this projection. So we force this vector back in the tangent space to get the correct 
direction. So we ensure that the projection lies in the tangent space. You see, as easy as that. Yeah, Wikipedia, if you say, hey, this was a little bit too simple as some of my viewers uh, leave me a comment. Hey, can you be a little bit more specific? Yes, you go to Wikipedia. I think it's beautiful over there. What is the tangent space? The normal uh, mathematical operations. And then you just transform it here to our case for the neural network. I asked GPT-4 to come up with some visual interpretation of a tangent space, but I have to tell you, Okay, so we have the unit sphere S as three here, and there's, ooh, yeah, this should be a tangent space. You see, this should be the vectors that are here. If this is X, the point X, we have a unit sphere S. This should be here, one of the vectors on a tangent sphere on this plane. But yeah, it's it, it seems that GPT-4 has not been programmed for mathematical formula um, 3D visualization, but I can take care about this right now. So we go on. Coming back to our topic. So I say, hey, GPT-4, why did I choose with transformers here in this particular file? The unit sphere is a manifold. Now it has to do with normalization and regularization of our mathematical composition. And GPT-4 makes it so, it's so beautiful formulated that I would never sort of think about this. So choosing the unit sphere as a manifold in the context of transformers as described in your latte file is the decision likely rooted in the desire to leverage certain geometric and mathematical properties of the unit sphere. Some key reason why the unit sphere might be chosen as a manifold is normalization. We want to maintain the norm of the vector. So constraining the vectors to lie on the unit sphere effectively normalizes them to have a constant norm, constant length in our Euclidean picture. And this can act as a form of regularization, you know this, preventing the magnitude of the feature vectors from growing too large, which might otherwise lead to numerical instabilities of our system or overfitting of the complete system. So this is why we normalize it. And by mapping the features here onto our particular manifold, and we can choose the unit sphere in the simplest case, the model can encourage the representation to be distinct and well separated. Beautiful. This is because the maximum distance between any two points in the unit sphere is limited. The dermatosphere, which can help in distinguish different features or different token representations. Yes, you know this. Then we have a geometric interpretation of the attention mechanism itself. And then we have some, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> to be focus at mathematical convenience, I would say make it easy to calculate. Okay. Then vectors are constrained to the unit sphere. In the simplest case, the dot product, which we calculated, remember here, uh, in that the dot product between any two vectors correspond to cosine single similarity of the cosine of the angle between them is a measure for the similarity, is a similarity measure, can be particularly useful in tension mechanism with the relevance of similarity between different elements is calculated using the dot product to ensure that these calculations are more about the direction or orientation of the vector rather than evolving a different magnitude. And this is what we want. We have to have here a beautiful normalized structure. Simplified calculations working on the unit sphere can simplify certain mathematical operations. What a coincidence. For instance, operation would normally require explicit normalization step that we may not need to do right now as the vectors are already normalized. Beautiful. Analytical traceability. Yes, beautiful. You know this. Summary. Okay, here we go. So at first, now we're going to explain again normalization, regularization, and especially in the nonlinear case where we try to treat transformers as some um, flow maps between some nonlinear states. And we have then to apply this to the other uh, mathematical construct. So normalization, you notice, know we just went through this, dividing the vector by its norm. We have now a no, uh, normalized where we have, for example, the acute Euclidean norm. You have about, I don't know, 25 different other norms you can use. So whatever is your particular task, you choose the right norm. Normalization ensures that all vectors have the same magnitude, making the system focus on the direction orientation of the vectors rather than the magnitude. This is especially useful when you use the dot product to calculate here the attention mechanism where we focus here on the angle between the vectors. And in transformers, we have this in self-attention. Beautiful. Regularization. Important. 
A technique used to prevent overfitting by our AI system by imposing constraint or penalties on the learning process. When vectors are constrained to the unit sphere, they can act as a form of regularization preventing overfitting of the system. You have a geometric constraint, you have some mathematical implementation on the transformer, but the unit sphere as a form of regularization can help in maintaining the balance between the model's ability to fit the training data and its generalization to new unseen data. This is the classical form that you know, that you love. And we have a conclusion. Beautiful. Careful. Hey, watch out. The protection of a unit sphere and the protection to a tangent space are different and serve different purposes. So the protection onto the unit sphere is for the normalization to a unit length, where the protection on the tangent space has a complete different meaning. And it will have a complete different meaning. And you know, what is the tangent space, the projection of the tangent space? This is the mathematical formula. Please remember this formula. We're going to use it in a minute. An additional purpose and transformer is used when we need to perform operation that respect the geometry of the unit sphere, relevant situation where we're dealing with changes or update to the vector representation, such as during back propagation or optimizing steps in training. So now finally we come to the back propagation methodology here. And here we are. <clears throat> And yeah, I've provided some additional information to chat GPT. And I had some discussions. So I say, hey, when you say updates to the vector representation, such as during the backdrop or optimization, by projecting onto the tangent sphere, we ensure that these updates are made in a way that is consistent with the underlying geometry of the sphere. Do you mean that the updates of backdrop itself are constrained by a mathematical formula? Or what does it mean? And chat GPT4 comes back and says, yes, when we talk about updates during the training in the context of a neural network, such a transformer being constrained by this mathematical formula, it prefers how the updates are computed, particularly in the presence of geometric constraint. And you know, mathematics and geometry are very densely intertwined. Hardly anything in mathematics you cannot present as a geometric idea or representation. And of course, this goes a holds true for backpropagation and gradient descent updates. So let's look at backprop for a second. During backpropagation neural network, you notice gradients of the loss function with respect to the model parameters are computed. These gradients indicate the direction in which the parameters should be adjusted to minimize the loss. Now we have them on our tangent space and we know exactly where they are because we project them back here to the tangent space. So we have now an absolute clear direction where we have to move here for gradient descent. The data parameters are constrained to lie in the unit sphere on any manifold simply applying the standard gradient descent updates might move this parameter off. So therefore adjust, adjusting the vector based on this gradient might run suck in a vector that is no longer lies on the unit sphere. This is a problem for the complexity of the mathematical of mathematics computation. And to ensure that the updated parameters remain within the geometric constraint of the manifold, the updates are projected back on this manifold. And this, in the case of a unit sphere, this involves projecting the updated vectors onto the tangent space at each point. And this is why I told you the whole story, because now finally we have the tools, we have the power to calculate this system. So my goodness, yes, now we start with the lecture. This was just a warm up to make you familiar with all of this. And now comes the beauty of the physical implementation of the system. If you are joining this lecture at this moment, beautiful, welcome to a short summary. <laughs> so we have fluid state equations in the flow state of transformers. So each token in a transformer network can be interpreted as a particle in a fluid. And I showed you why. It's state, this means it's embedding vector representation that we have chosen for a particular parametrization for a particular tokenizer evolves as it flows through the layers of the network, similar how the state of a fluid particle evolves over the time. But of course, we have to have some interacting forces. But before we go to the self-attention as the interacting forces, we have to describe the dynamics. And you know here the navier stokes equation, you know everything. You know we have here the forces. During the self-attention phase and the self-attention phase can be interpreted as a set of interacting forces among the tokens. These are our particles. Now, the strength, the direction of these forces are determined by the learned parameters of the model and the current state of the token. You remember there was something with the weight tensor. Yes, you're right. So this interaction is where the analogy to fluid dynamics becomes particular important. And then, as I told you, we have now a continuous transformation to be able to use here the flight fluid dynamic equation. So we treat the layer index in the transformer as our continuous variable. 
So the flow state can be modeled using now simply differential equation to describe the continuous transformation of the token state. This is again how flow state equation describe the continuous evolution of fluid particles. Beautiful. And then we end up with a flow map representation where we have here a projection into the probability space. Now, now we come here to the real mathematics here. So we say, what is a transformer in this new, let's call it an image of a fluid map? Transformer is a flow map on the unit sphere where we have an input sequence as an initial condition, which is evolved to the dynamics. And now if you want, this is here our main state equation kind of here, but now with physics integrated. So how does here our state x at a particular time t changes over time? And we have here p, this is now the projection. And now you know why I told you everything about here, the projection to the tangent space, because you're not going to believe it, but p denotes here the projection of y onto the tangent space of our unit sphere. And you say, my goodness, what a great lecture it has been up until now, because now I understand exactly what this means. This is nothing else than here our projection. And we have here again our partition function z. And z now is a little tiny bit more complicated, but you know now what it is. And we have here our key query and value uh, tensors parameter learned from the data. Beta is something that you don't have to care, inverse temperature. So now you understand we have here the partition function, we have here the projection, and the change over time here of our input sequence, or our initial condition, our starting condition, is here the projection here to our tangent space. Then we have some normalization, and then here we simply have here our formula. All of this to understand this formula. But if I would have started with this, you might have decided that it is too simple or maybe a little bit too challenging for you. Now, you remember that we are here in an interacting particle system because we need to the equation of the interacting particle system as a simplified version. Yes, so the self-attention tensor structure, uh, matrix A, I, G, on a particular time sequence t is now defined here in the simplified way. This is what we're looking for. This is now a nonlinear coupling mechanism in the interacting particle system. And this stochastic matrix A, rows are probability vectors, is now the self-attention matrix of the transformer understanding this now as an interacting particle system that is definitely an improvement over here the state space equation the member equation and everything else the word attention stems from the fact that here our tensor captures the attention the self-attention given by particle i to the particle j relatively to all particles l element in the set of s now, dictated by the matrix as you know the self-attention you know how to calculate you can simplify it further, beautiful, yes. And now we come to this beautiful publication. And this publication gave me all the ideas and I had a deep dive. And this, I just showed you the first three formula of this. This is a publication by MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Department of Mathematics, and MIT, Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, a different combination, interesting combination, by the way, MIT and CRNRS, France. And yeah, you can tell that this is written by some professional expert in mathematics. And they have now December 22, 2023, a new mathematical perspective on transformers. And this, they are the geniuses that ignited this video that I show you right now because they say now hey if we now integrate here in our transform architecture the feed forward layers so the complete transformer dynamics now combines all of the mechanisms above with a feed forward layer you know this from our classical transformer 
And now we have here an equation for the dynamics of the system. This is how the time evolution of our system is going to happen. And we have here this projection that you know of. You, now you know to understand, you integrate here everything. You know what this means. And this was the whole case and the whole reason why I had this little bit more elongated introduction to this. Because now you can read this paper. You can read now a paper by some by MIT on the latest mathematical uh, development in the transformer architecture for AI research. So you see, now you understand this. And as I told you, whenever we have symmetry or conservation of a particular parameter, we have certain rules. And here, as I told you, we have the continuity equation. And now we look here at the continuity equation exactly in this case. And they told us here, now the vector field driving the evolution of a single particle here clearly depends on all the other particles since we have a multi-n dimensional uh, particle interaction structure. And one can rewrite the dynamics here in a specific form. And then you get here, the evolution is governed by the continuity equation. So this equation describes here our, if you want, probability distribution. This is what we were looking for for the dynamic of the system. And as I told you, we also have here energy, the interaction of or the interaction energy functor, if you want. No, interaction energy here in the classical sense here. And you see, we can calculate now all the different parameters we need for the evolution of this system in this view as a flow state of a nonlinear dynamic system with the fluid computational forms from theoretical physics. So here again, you have here how the system changes over time here, how here the interaction energy changes over time. A little bit more complicated that you are used to when you are just have a PhD in computer science, but never mind. There is now a beauty to this system. And this beauty, it's a little bit more complicated on the mathematical side. I summarize here this in the words of the author. Please go to this. This is such a beautiful publication. So if you really want to see what's happening in AI research, how we can have a deep dive, understanding transformers in a much better way. Great publication. Summary now. The, the main point here is that every particle, now in our case it's a token because we are going here with natural language, follows the flow of a vector field, which depends on the empirical measures of all the other particles. So in turn, the continuum equation governs the evolution of the empirical measures of the particles of the tokens whose long time behavior is of crucial interest. This is what we're interested in. How is the time evolution of the system when we have here these fluid vector fields? So they find out doing all the calculation, the, their main observation is that the particles tend to cluster. So the tokens tend to cluster to similar token clusters under this dynamics. This is what we expect here from the classical self attention. And this phenomenon is of particular relevance in learning tasks such as the next token prediction that we have in the classical transformer network. When one seeks to map a given input sequence, a sentence of n tokens of n words, onto a given next token, autoregressive transformer architecture, we predict the next word. This is happening here. In this case now, under this mathematical formulas, understanding here or applying here the physics from fluid emission, the input measures encode the probability distribution of the next token, and its clustering indicates a small number of possible outcomes. So if the time evolves in the dynamic of the system, the cluster gets smaller and smaller because the next word prediction gets better and better. So the set of possible next word is reduced, the cluster becomes smaller and smaller. And they say their mathematical results indicate that the limiting distribution is actually a point mass, leaving no room for randomness, which is at odd with a practical observation. And they say this paradox, and it's a little bit technical, to be honest with you. Maybe I do a second video if you want to see this, or you read the paper. 
So this paradox is resolved and they found a solution that there actually is a metastable state where we have two different time scales at work. So the transformer flow appears to possess two different time scales. So in the first phase of consolidation, finding the next autoregressive token structure, those tokens quickly form a few clusters. And the process goes on, the dynamics, the calculation of our inference, for example, goes on. So tokens are reduced, cluster becomes smaller and smaller. Maybe we have one, two, three clusters around here in our space. While then in a second phase, and they say it's a slower phase, through the process of pairwise merging of these clusters, all of these possible tokens of the next possible word finally collapse to a single point, and we have then the next token in our autoregressive system, as you know it from the classical self -identification. So they say, hey, if we apply this dynamics that we know from fluid physics to this transformer, and we say this is now a flow state and a nonlinear dynamic system governed by the equation of fluid dynamics of theoretical physics, of theoretical physics, let me mention this, then we get this beautiful result that this system also converges and we get actually here the next token, exactly what you expect. So you see, it's not that the publication attention is all you need, was the only way here for our self-attention to come up and develop the dynamic and finally culminate here in the next token generated here because it is a generative AI system, we can use here for a deep dive. If we use this, we understand here dynamics much better. We can now analyze what is happening inside of the transformers in a much, well, I wouldn't call it an easier way but in a more physical implemented way so that we have the laws of physics really guiding the uh, temporal evolution of our system in the probability density space. Okay. Okay. This was here a beautiful outlook. So thanks a lot here to those authors. Genius. I love this publication. Please, if you are interested to get an idea I have given you all the tools, all the understanding that you can read this. Now you understand exactly what's happening. December 22. So this is our Christmas present here that I would like to give you here on this particular YouTube channel for 2024. Enjoy it. And it would be great to see you in the new year.